Howdy and welcome to the 10 Week Bible Study. This is week four, day one of our study of Mark. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about Mark 5, 1 through 10. Well, welcome back to the 10 Week Bible Study. Again, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs. Would you join me as we pray before we start today? Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us, God? Speak to us and fill our hearts with the knowledge of you. We want to know you more through your word, not just more about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. With that, let's jump into God's word. We'll be reading today from the NIV. This is Mark 5, starting in verse 1. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. Pausing right there. Remember last week we went through... uh, the last passage we read was they were crossing the Sea of Galilee at night and a giant storm comes up. It says a squall, you know, something really violent. This violent storm is attacking them. And, and that's when Jesus, they wake him up and said, uh, we're all going to die, Jesus. And he, he rebukes the storm and instantly, instantly the waves die down. It's placid, it's calm. And they're terrified and they cross over. And that's where our story starts, right? They, they went across the lake. They get over to the region of the Gerasenes. The Gerasenes, for context, this is on the southeast side of the Sea of Galilee. There's some debate over exactly where the region of the Gerasenes are, but most people believe that it's not on the lake. It's actually quite a ways away from the lake. So they cross over the lake and then they they come some way away. But it also could be that because it, it seems like in, in these stories in this chapter, we're going to be still near the lake. Um, and so it could be that even though the region of the Gerasenes is, is a little bit further away from the lake, that they've crossed over to that quadrant of the lake. It seems like we're staying near the Sea of Galilee. But what most people understand is the region of the Gerasenes was a little bit further away. But but basically, they're just kind of calling it that this area near the lake um, is the region of the Gerasenes. All right, continuing. Verse 3. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. This guy is supernaturally crazy and supernaturally strong, right? He's living like basically um, naked in the in these tombs, like who would live in tombs? But he's also supernaturally strong. No one can bind him. Like they're trying to bind him and he breaks the chain. No, people can't do that. That's not natural. We're not talking about little bitty handcuffs, right? We're talking about some serious chains, some some you know bindings they're trying to put on him and he tears it. This is not human strength. This is supernatural strength. I once heard a story about a, a man who was, he, he was giving a, a teaching. He said he was in South Korea and he was teaching on demons. And he was talking about this. He's like, listen, he's like, if you're dealing with someone who's demon possessed, don't try and, and they're acting crazy or whatever. He's like, don't put a hand on them and try and stop them. He's, he said, you're not going to be able to. It's not going to work. This is not a human thing that's going on here. So he's like, don't try and physically restrain them. You're going to regret it. And he said, right after he gave that teaching, people came up for prayer and this, he said, this little bitty old Korean grandmother comes up for prayer and they start praying for her. She starts manifesting demons and acting all strange and weird and convulsing. And so they thought it was kind of weird. So they took her to a different room. Um, kind of behind the stage and and they're praying over and she's getting so weird and so violent that they got these these big you know he's he called them korean you know bodybuilders like five of them and he said that he walks in and this is immediately after he told him he's like don't try and physically restrain somebody he walks in to the room where these people are trying to cast this demon out of this old grandma. And he says, he he sees as he walks in, these five huge, you know, giant Korean men, very big and strong, you know, bouncer types is what he said. And they're trying to physically restrain this little old grandma that he said was 90 pounds soaking wet. And he said they're trying to restrain her and he's watching them do this as he walks in. And not long after he walked in, he saw all five of them go flying across the room. This little old grandma picked them up and tossed them like they were stuffed animals, he said. 
And so he he referenced, you know, this passage and said, this is not a supernatural thing. This guy is supernaturally strong. You shouldn't try and restrain. So he went over to him and he he prayed for the woman, had more people come over and they prayed and they cast the demons out of the woman. She got free. And then he went and he he told the guys, he's like, I just told you not to do this. I just told you don't try and physically restrain this person. And you did it anyway. They paid the price for it. Um, we're, when we're dealing with supernatural things, don't try and approach them with natural things. These natural human bonds, these chains, they didn't work. Um, but what is going to work is what Jesus is going to do. I, I will say, I've always wondered uh, about this whole deal, you know, crying out and he's cutting himself with stones. I don't know exactly what the cutting with the stones represents or what that is. Uh, nobody really does. I mean, it's just something, it's saying that's what he did. Like this guy is like verifiably crazy, but I do have a, a very good friend. Uh, one of my best friends is a missionary in Indonesia. And he's told me many stories of things very much like this as demon possessed people. And one of the things, uh, so for instance, one, this one person that he knew, um, he he was preaching the gospel to this, this guy who ended up becoming a very close friend of his. He was preaching the gospel to this guy. Um, he had been a street kid his whole life, grew up on the streets, had to fight all the time. And, and my friend said he, he was witnessing to him and the guy accepted the gospel. And then he starts manifesting demons. My friend starts casting demons out of him and all the demons, when the demons come out of him, the guy gets saved. But then as soon as all the demons leave this guy, he said it was the wildest thing. He said, the guy started bleeding all over his body simultaneously. And he said little shards of metal started to come out of his body. He's like, they're, he's, he's bleeding in all these places. And little shards of metal start coming out of his body from everywhere. And my friend, he was, he said he was thoroughly freaked out by all of this. He like jumps back and he's like watching all of this happen, not knowing what on earth to, to make of this. He's like never seen anything anything like this. He says, this is the weirdest thing he's ever seen. And all of a sudden, all this, all this, this, this pile of little shards of sharp, jagged metal laying on the ground around this guy. And he gets up and he's restored. He's a normal person again. He's not demon possessed. He's not crazy. He's not anything. And my friend was like, what was that? And the guy proceeds to tell him the story is that as a street kid, he, and he was a little street kid, he used to get beat up all the time and he, he couldn't really hold his own because he was so small. And so he said that one day he was talking to the spirits, basically demons, and they told him, we can make you strong. And so what they convinced him to do, and again, I don't understand how all this happens, but he said he would take little shards of metal and he would put them up to his skin. And he said he would watch his skin absorb them. And it would just go into his skin, he said, with no blood. He didn't like shove them into his skin. It just, his skin like accepted it and it like got sucked into him. He did this over and over and over again. He did this as much as possible. And then he said, what would happen is he'd go and he'd get into a fight and the person, he would just let the person just wail on him, like just punch, 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 punch. And he could just take punches. He could he just get the, he would let them beat him up until they wore themselves out so much. And then he would jump them and he would tear them up and he would win the fight. But he, he said he wouldn't feel pain. He wouldn't get hurt as they're beating him up. And he said he, he you know, he would gain this, what he you know called this, this power. And it was really demonic power, but it was like through this weird deal with the metal. But when he got saved and delivered from demons, all the metal came out. This guy actually ended up going on to be a powerful evangelist, led uh, hundreds of people to the Lord over a short period of time. Uh, just the last time that I, I talked to my friend, very powerful evangelist, lover of Jesus. But you know, this was the story that he told. And, and so part of me wonders if it's not something like this. And, and, and my friend would tell me like after that, he met lots of people through this guy. They would go and meet street kids and people like that, where they would do these weird animistic rituals. One guy, he said, buried himself in the dirt up to the neck because he said the spirits told him that he could gain the power of the earth, you know, this new agey, weird, satanic thing. And he said tons of stories. He had, he had, after that, he had tons of stories of people doing those kinds of things. So part of me wonders if it's not some kind of like new agey, demonic, occultic thing that this guy is doing, cutting himself with stones to make himself more powerful or something like that. But in the end, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because no one could physically restrain him, but there's a restraint greater than anything natural in this world. And he's about to encounter it. verse six. 
When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again not to send them out of the area. So Mark is again going back to this issue of demonic possession. Mark, I mean, we've already seen up to chapter five, we've had multiple encounters where Jesus is dealing with people possessed by demons. This is a big theme in the book of Mark up, you know, to the first half of Mark or so. We're seeing this, and now we've kind of almost come to a climax with this demonic possession because Jesus asks the demon, what's, he's he's talking to the man, but he's actually talking to the demons. He says, what's your name? He says, my name is Legion, for we are many. There's not one demon in this guy. There's many, many demons. And the Legion, we know, of course, is thousands of soldiers. And so we can maybe kind of assume, we don't know, kind of assume that this is thousands of demons. And and what we're going to see when, when, and of course, if you're reading on ahead, which I encourage you to do, you know, Jesus is going to cast them into a group of thousands of pigs. So we get the impression here that this is thousands of demons are possessing this one man. So a lot of things going on here. That's really weird. That's kind of scary. (laughs) Um, You know, what do you do if, if you're, casting demons out of people and you meet someone with thousands of demons. Um, but in the end, you know, these kind of things can feel scary and feel weird, but in the end we serve the most high God sickness, one demon, thousands of demons. It doesn't matter. We serve the most high God. We invoke his name and we walk by his light. There's nothing too powerful for him. There's nothing too strange for him. And there's a lot of strange things in this world. There's nothing too strange for him. There's nothing too difficult for him. There's nothing too scary for him. And there's a lot of scary things in this world. Nothing too scary for him. We've already seen that in the last passage with the boat and the storm. That's who we serve. That's who we've invited to dwell within us. The same man who cast out thousands of demons out of this man or is about to cast them out is the same one that we have living inside of us. I find it interesting, the two questions that the demons are going to ask Jesus, the first one here in this passage is, have you come to torture us? You know, he's, they're shouting, you, and we know who you are. And Jesus is always telling the demons, stop that. Again, we don't know the connotation of these things. Some people have interpreted saying that it's, it's facetious. Oh, we know who you are. You're the most high God. And some people have just said that it's straightforward. Whichever way, we don't know, but Jesus always shuts them down. So stop it. Come out of him. It's like, are you here to torture us? These demons understand what's coming for them. Separation from God, eternity in hell, is not about darkness. It's not about just separation from God. There is an actual torture coming. For those who have fought against God, for those, of the, for those who have chosen to fight in war against him, these demons, they, they saw Jesus face to face. These fallen angels, they were created and they stood before God and they rebelled against him. Now they've been cast out of the, you know, not the heavenly places, but the, the throne room of God. They, they have been cast out and they know who he is. And they know that whatever their fate now, the one that's coming is far worse, far worse. But our fate, if we pledge our allegiance to Jesus, is far, far better. Our fate is going to be like this man that we're going to read about in the next passage. For the 10-week Bible study, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and I can't wait to see you next time.
Hey, thanks for watching the 10-week Bible study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing you're always hearing people talk about? It really helps other people find out about the show, and my heart is for people to fall in love with God's Word. Thank you. Thank you.